the verse that just pops out in my mind is found in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is a prophetic passage. Jesus Christ, his, his apostles, his disciples asked him um, at the beginning of, of Matthew 24, after Jesus said, hey, do you see all these things? There's not going to be one stone left upon another. They're showing them how beautiful the temple was and everything else. He said, you know what? There's not going to be one stone left upon another. And then his disciples ask him, saying, hey, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. So they're asking him kind of a few different things like, hey, what's a sign of your coming? What's going what's to happen? What are the signs at the end of the world? You know, w tell us about this stuff. And then he answers them and he starts to tell them. So he, he gives them some information about the destruction of the temple and the destruction of Jerusalem, which did take place in 70 AD. But then he also tells them about his coming, his, his return to earth, which didn't happen in 70 AD, which is still yet to happen. And of course, of the end of the world. So he gives them the answers that they were asking when they asked the questions. And one of the things that he says in here is um, he's warning them about all the, the, the tribulation that's going to come their way. So if you look at verse number 8, he, he says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. And talk about nation against nation, pestilences, earthquakes, things like that. He says that's just the beginning of sorrows, but then he starts getting into more detailed things that's going to happen after all the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, there's that word saved, right? It's just like the word salvation. So some people will take this and say, see, look, you have to endure all the persecutions in order for your soul to be saved. You have to live an upright life. You have to do all these good works. Anything that comes your way, you can't fail or waver on your faith in Christ and on, you know, standing for him and doing all the work and everything else. People will turn to this passage and say that, but when we're reading in context, that's, it doesn't say anything about your eternal life. It just says, hey, there's going to be false prophets. There's going to be a lot of sin. There's a lot of iniquity that abounds. So there's going to be a lot less love. People are going to be just real cold and cold-hearted and doing some pretty nasty things in the end times. And he says, but look, if you endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And when we continue reading, he says, okay, this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in all the world. Verse 15 says, okay, now when you see the abomination of desolation, uh, standing in the holy place, then let them be which in, in Judea, flee into the mountains, and basically to, to run, kind of head for the hills. Woe to them that are with child. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jumping through this real quickly. Verse 19, just to can keep the context without going too much in, de in depth. Verse 20, pray your flight be not in the winter, neither in the Sabbath. Verse 21 says, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. This is a warning that in the end times, believers will be going through great tribulation. Okay, you're not going to be taken out of this world. That's a whole other sermon for another day. But clearly, he's, he's giving all of this instruction. Hey, here's what's going to happen. There's going to be many false prophets. But hey, he that endures the end, the same shall be saved. We're getting to that because in the context matters. What does, what's the salvation? What's the saved he's even talking about? All these things are happening. There's going to be great tribulation. Verse 22 then says, and except those days should be shortened because of all this great tribulation, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So in the context, the salvation is your flesh being saved. It's not your soul being saved. It's not your spirit being saved. It's your flesh. It's, it's hey, there's going to be so much tribulation. There's going to be so many people that are against believers in the end times, especially when the Antichrist comes into power and wages war against the saints and requires people to take the mark of the beast so he can clearly identify and separate the believers from the unbelievers, from those that are children of the devil, and be able to say, oh, you're not going to take the mark of the beast? Okay, then we're going to kill you. 
and this is this great tribulation that's coming and the bible says that except those days should be shortened that amount of time that satan is in power antichrist is in power and 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 going after the saved then no flesh would be saved it says but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so if anyone endures to the end the end of that time the end of that great tribulation they're going to be the ones who are alive and are and remain which see the lord jesus at his coming because those days are shortened and their flesh is saved they don't get martyred they don't get killed by the antichrist or by the people who are supporting the antichrist they're going to get raptured up when jesus comes back they've endured the affliction and the persecution to the end to the end of that affliction because that salvation comes jesus christ comes back in the clouds that's their flesh being saved that's what the context teaches it has nothing to do with how good of a life that you live in order for your soul to be saved notice that salvation does not talk about eternal life it doesn't talking about going to hell it literally only talks about flesh being saved in the context which is why context is so important 